I know there's been like a, a Thanosing, you may have noticed, in gaming and esports. A snap has occurred, hasn't it? You've probably seen, obviously we covered last time out, Riot laid off 11% of their company, yet incredibly managed to avoid laying off anyone in the C-suite. And they all said it had to be done had to be done to keep the company alive. And this has had a ridiculous uh, impact on things. Then after that, Activision Blizzard announced 1,900 uh, layoffs. Microsoft lays off 1,900 Activision Blizzard and Xbox employees, including the president, Mike Yabara. Now, I don't know what people were expecting here. Everybody seemed to be, like, really, really shocked when this got announced. And I'm like, well, why would you? why would you be? What do you think was going to happen? Do you think Microsoft bought bought you and, th and thought, yeah, we'll keep all them people on? Certainly there's going to be no overlap with our workforce and our employees. Of course not. There were always going to be layoffs, and in particularly in, in the management. Now, we know Bobby Kotick's gone. We said farewell to the Goblin King in a, in a previous stream. But obviously, you're going to see more executives, more project managers, more long-time workers going out. And plenty of rank and file, as the 1900 are almost entirely from across Activision and Blizzard. And, as I also predicted, massive layoffs in the esports department, specifically including all the Overwatch hires that they made. And if you know about Microsoft, you know that's just how they that's how they do things. They like spectacle esports. They want to do a one-off event like they do with the Halos or outsource it. And by the way, my prediction is this. I think everyone's going to outsource esports to the Saudis now. Why not? Why take the financial hit? Why not just sell it? Why not just let them bear the brunt of it? Let them license it or whatever. Riot will be, end up doing that. This, this esports World Cup thing's a tester. That's what that feels like. So anyway, Microsoft is laying off 1,900 employees at Activision Blizzard and Xbox this week, while Microsoft is primarily laying off roles at Activision Blizzard. Some Xbox and ZeniMax employees will also be impacted by the cuts. The cuts work out to roughly 8% of the overall Microsoft gaming division. That stands at around 22,000 employees in total. Uh, and then The Verge has obtained the internal memo, which is a lot of corporate speak and just basically says, like, thanks, thanks for your contribution. Uh, to the games and then obviously you can see here alongside the layoffs blizzard president mike yabara uh decided to leave the company he said as many of you know mike previously spent more than 20 years at microsoft now that he has seen the acquisition through his blizzard's president he has decided to leave the company which was a statement given by uh, microsoft's game content and studios president matt booty shake that booty so mike yabara there publicly uh, saying goodbye and then it goes on to just give you a report uh you know of, of, of riot games google are laying off people discord have been laying off people we know about the twitch layoffs we know about the unity layoffs ebay paypal announced the other day after this was uh, written it's it's gaming it's esports and it's tech and they are and, and they are having to do this because and I know you've heard me say it before, they massively overhired in the pandemic. And this is another reason why, as we'll get to, I don't have a lot of sympathy for these people because it's literally gone. Hey, I've just celebrated my one year anniversary at Activision Blizzard, a piece of shit company. And uh, oh, they fired me only after a year. Well, I had fun and I learned so much. No, you didn't. You didn't learn anything. You took a job. You thought you were fucking set. You thought you were going to climb that ladder. You took a speculative job in a pandemic. Right? When everyone else was on their knees and miserable, you just saw happen to work in a sector where they were like, fucking hell, everyone's staying indoors. Shit, quick. We need someone to get on the gacha microtransactions. Let's fucking go. Let's hire thousands of people. It doesn't even matter. So you were part of a reckless overhire from, from companies that have now had to correct their recklessness. Did you never think for one moment, ah, the pandemic's not gonna last like just a basic thing pandemics don't last pandemics by nature burn themselves out do you know why we either fucking cure them or they kill everyone right the idea of the never-ending pandemic it's gibberish it can't happen it, your population just hits a point where it's like well there's barely anyone to infect anyone now 
It's just all the nat. It's just all the natural immunos left. <laughs> so you know y you can't have a perm or pandemic, a perm demic. It doesn't exist. And by the way, also they t they took these jobs on these flimsy contracts. Uh, have you ever wondered why is everyone in esports a fucking contractor? Why is that? Why aren't you a fully contracted worker with benefits, right, and all the perks of the job? Why aren't you getting all the cool shit? That the early starters, the C-suiteers get. Why aren't you getting that? If the industry's fine, why aren't you getting that? Why is it every time one of their ridiculous projects needs to get done, you are you are crunched into oblivion? You have to do mandatory overtime to finish projects that it was the management that set the unrealistic deadlines. It was the management and the C-suite that went into the financial meetings and lied about the likelihood of the project being f finished. Why is it? If the industry's so good and everything's fine. So listen, you know that. You're an adult. You're old enough to work. So a lot of these people that are going out are just people that were hired into what were essentially temporary jobs. Now, that's not always true. There's been some funny ones. I have enjoyed a bit of schadenfreude, however you fucking say that word. Because I hear people go, schadenfreude, 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 schadenfreude. No one can pronounce it. Germans, sort your shit out. Anyway, today's layoffs come just a few months after some big Xbox leadership changes saw Sarah Bond promoted to Xbox president, leading all Xbox, pl Xbox platforms and hardware work. Booty was also promoted to president of game content and studios, which includes overseeing Bethesda, Zenimax Studios, and Activision Blizzard. Now, uh, just uh, some thoughts on the Mike Yabara uh, departure. He did the usual. It's been great to be here. Loved working. It meant so much to me. He hasn't even been president all that long. And I have to say, I'm not optimistic about Activision Blizzard because, as I said in the most recent episode of the Esports Gospel, anyone who's a fan of Activision Blizzard no knows this. Activision Blizzard, ever since Bobby Kotick saw his first gacha game, so what, people are just topping up money like a, a, a fucking slot machine? But Yeah, but okay, but what, what about the game? Like, is there any game there? No, what, what, they just keep putting money in for content endlessly? And it's like they're addicted because the mechanics are like, oh, what? It blew his mind. And ever since then, he's wanted Activision Blizzard's focus to be mobile. He loves Candy Crush. Ever since they bought King Games, it's been fucking mega for them. Every single financial report, it makes money. And if you notice, ever since he saw that, what have the games started to do? The games all started to get fucking loot crates and then battle passes and then battle passes. Like the Diablo one where it's like got three different fucking currencies. Oh, and by the way, you better get playing today because there's, there's an instance. You've only got a 14-hour window to get your free peasant coins and if you get a million peasant coins you could buy a fucking skin nobody wants which by the way that will probably come out was algorithmically predetermined to be shit they've done it to every fucking single game and it's like just remember diablo 2 like just remember diablo 2 just remember you just play the game right you play the game it's wicked for for the time it's like, fucking hell, yeah, look at me. I'm in a dungeon, murking everyone and leveling up. And then I get loot. And then I go to the auction house. And I can sell shit for real money. This is fucking banging, this. Love this shit. Do you remember that? And now look at what Diablo 4 is. It's a fucking travesty. And it's every game. It's every game. They, they even put in a World of Warcraft for a time with one of their updates. Can't remember which one. So anyway, that's what Activision Blizzard have been doing. The games are garbage now. They haven't made a good game in a long, long time. Not only have they not made a good game in a long, long time, they've made some. They've had some absolute disasters. Something that would have been unthinkable of a Blizzard, you know, release, a Blizzard launch being an absolute disaster. They just started to accept it. It just became the norm. It became the norm with every fucking update to World of Warcraft, every new content patch. It became the norm after Diablo 3. We just couldn't even play it for like the first 48 hours because of that ridiculous fucking error that drove everybody crazy. And you go to Warcraft Reforged, which we've done videos on. Imagine just launching just a broken game and you've lied about what's in it this is what's really funny actually i look at all the whining about cs2 and it's eh, 
uh, and it's like you've just abandoned it and it's like they never promised you anything they haven't at least broken a promise they never said it was going to have full animated cutscenes and then didn't put them in like blizzard do this shit all the fucking time and people still buy their games and just they just fucking eat it up it's ridiculous so look Activision Blizzard, they needed a change of management, and they needed a clean out, and so I'm not optimistic, but I will say this, they have replaced Mike Yabara with a non-Bobby Kotick crony, the Bobby Kotick cronies are, are, are being cleaned out, it appears, that's a good thing, that, that can only be good for the company, because it was Bobby Kotick and his cronies that were, obs and I know this from talking to Blizzard employees at all levels, his stuff was was always, when can we get it on mobile? How can we put this functionality in? What about the loot crates? What about the legality of this? Da, da, da. He wanted all of his games to be just so maximized in terms of how much money consumers could potentially put into them. And as I said, I, I think the launch of Overwatch, it was such a disgrace. I, I, look... I fucking despise the Overwatch community. They're just Tumblr sex weirdos, all of them, just fucking idiots. But, I'll t but I always side with the consumer, and I can't think of anyone at Activision Blizzard who've had it worse. The Overwatch community, they had a perfectly good game that they liked and was still being updated, and then it got spun into being an eSport where the balance of the game that they played casually was all done from the esports down because the league had to succeed because that was going to be Bobby Kotick's cash cow for all of his buddies. So you got you got wrecked on that. Your game sucked for ages because they were trying to balance it around professional play. Then they said, we're making a sequel. A sequel nobody wanted. A sequel in, what, just like five, after five years for like a game as a live service? And they promised you cross-version play. They said, hey, you don't have to buy it. Right, if you don't have you don't have to get Overwatch 2, but if you do, you'll get all of these perks. We're gonna have a PVE system in there. But regardless of that, it, you can keep your Overwatch one, keep all your skins and everything, and you'll be able to play people in Overwatch 2. Wow, it's got the potential to double the player base. I'm pogging. Then they just closed down Overwatch One servers. They just shut it down, shut them all down. It was a lie. They just lied to you immediately by the way class action anyone N no no they just lied to you and then okay well don't worry at least i'm getting overwatch 2 and all that sick pve content they promised me i'll just i'll just buy the game i love overwatch you know i, I love it there's going to be all this con no sorry we've had to stop developing the sole reason for the game to exist because Upper tier management at Activision Blizzard need us to rush this sequel out because they hope it's going to save the Overwatch League. And so it comes out. Somewhere in that, they fucking fumble the bag by breaking the deal with NetEase and pissing off every Chinese games executive in the company. So their games are still now not being sold in China. The biggest games and esports market in the world. And then... Just to top it off, that PvE content you were promised, the PvE content you wanted, that you were told, regrettably, we can't give it to you now. They then took some of it that they'd already made, packaged it as a DLC, and sold it to you for $15 at a time. And you people bought it. <laughs> It's fucking outrageous what they did to the Overwatch fan base. Uh, it's so insane. So anyway, that is all Kotick era decisions because that's what they prioritized while he was there. Mike Yabara, not the type of dude to rock the boat, evidently. That's why he got the gig. But they've got a new president now. I, I believe her surname is pronounced Faris. That's how people have said it to me. Um, I've never met her or heard her say her own name. So uh, I, I could be incorrect on that. But uh, Joanna Faris uh, is the new president of Blizzard Entertainment. Um, you might have heard me talk about her uh, briefly uh, before. She worked at the NFL in the marketing area and, and then became a product manager for the NFL. She worked on that for 11 years. 
She was a Harvard graduate. She went to the NFL. She did 11 years of making the product at the NFL better. Now, listen, I'll just say this. I don't care. I I haven't even looked at the numbers. I don't want to look at the numbers, frankly, uh, in case I'm wrong. (laughs) But but I think the NFL has gone from strength to strength. I love the NFL. Uh, It's my thing. I fucking love the way it's marketed. I love the uh, crossovers that they do with all of their partners. You know, it is an ads fest by nature. You're never going to get away from that because of how the game is stop start like that. But I love it. I, I, I love the way I can watch all the games with the NFL Game Pass and just have just you know, it's 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 been great. I always wanted a setup like that for basically. Uh, esports i did i really thought we could have got there it just obviously our fans suck (laughs) and uh everyone making the decisions uh, is a greedy moron so problems but anyway i love the nfl network love all of their work so for me she is an unbelievably competent individual and when she got to activision blizzard her job was to run the call of duty league now i know not everyone is saying the call of duty league is a bed of roses i don't think anyone is saying that at all but the call of duty league has significantly outperformed the overwatch league because it still fucking exists, right? Honestly, I think with the budget that they had and what they were able to do, I think I could call the CDL a relative success, I think. I, I, I wouldn't have an issue saying that. Anyway, when the issue started coming down, down about the Overwatch League and they got rid of people in the management of that project she ended up becoming like the head of leagues the commissioner of both leagues essentially which is like a mammoth undertaking and she was there long after the overwatch league was doomed to fail she essentially was like i don't know she's like the undertaker you know what i mean she's fucking paul bearer like just oh yes just fucking watching the overwatch league go into the coffin like oh that's that's what she was doing you know so now she's the president of the company and she put this uh, statement out which is either a, a genuine sincere cause for optimism or pr bullshit you can be the judge of that one activision blizzard and king are decidedly different companies with distinct games i believe that's a dig at bobby kotick because obviously king is the candy crush arm and the mobile games and activision and uh, and blizzard you know they are distinct games with 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 uh, distinct cultures and communities and obviously yes stop putting your shit freemium mobile game mechanics into everything uh is uh, i read it that way i'm probably reading too much into it it is important to note that call of duty's way of waking up in the morning to deliver for players can often differ from the stunning games in blizzard's realm each with different gameplay experiences communities that surround them and requisite models of success i've discussed this with the blizzard leadership team and i'm walking into this role with sensitivity to these dynamics and deep respect for blizzard as we begin to explore taking our universes to even higher heights i'm committed to doing everything i can to help blizzard thrive with care and consideration for you and our games each unique and special in their own right i'm optimistic about our ability to serve our current and future player communities and to further amplify the shared passion for greatness polish this ain't been true for a while and creative mastery that is hallmark a uh, hallmark of blizzard's approach to game making she also throws in i'm a gamer just like you uh, my number one job in life is raising two amazing boys in addition to parenthood a typical week for me includes finding time for yoga and prayer and of course playing video games big diablo 4 fan over here throughout the joy i find in games and working with those who make them only deepen so you know uh she's just like you for real for real except none of you do fucking yoga in fact most of you probably haven't even seen your toes in a few years you wretched gamer peons i'm just kidding not you not you not you you're the beautiful people i'm the hideous chud that you've all come to watch like a victorian freak show read the news read the- look you can read the news read read <sighs> i am not an animal i'm not an animal anyway i am cautiously optimistic uh cautiously i think it can only be a step in the right direction right uh, it has to be it has to be it has to symbolize part of a bigger clean out and obviously look you fire 1900 people 
you're going to lose some good people. I did see some people from Activision Blizzard lose their jobs, and I thought, you know what? That's sad, and um, I'll get into some of them right now. But equally, I'm going to say, if you've got 1,900 people to fire and you can still run a company, uh, you are probably hired too many people at some point, and probably many of those people actually don't really do all that much. That is a deeply unpopular opinion to publicly express right now. What are you supposed to do when the firings occur and you've had a snap event like this? You're supposed to go, oh, thoughts and prayers, so many good people affected by this. And it's like, look, the journalist, Richard Lewis, is always going to reach out, right? And he's always going to say, look, if you've got something to get off your chest, if there's anything I can help with, or if you owed any money, uh, my journalism is a platform for you, the people, right? But Richard Lewis, the person, Richard Lewis, the dude, uh, no, no, I'm not coming along for it, actually. I, I don't want to, I'm not. I don't think you were all good people. I found many of you fucking insufferable while you had them jobs, actually. And, you know, look, there's a little bit. We'll get into this in a minute. There's a little bit of bitterness. It's tinged with a little bit of bitterness. You know, in my time working in esports and coming up to 20 years now, I've been censored. I've been bullied. Uh, I've been threatened. I've had people lobbied for me to be fired repeatedly. Many of them people who worked at these companies. Uh, I've had Riot Games pull work away from me. Uh, never forget, the company Riot Games told ESL for an event I was hired to work, IEM San Jose. I was due to work a StarCraft event, StarCraft being Activision, an Activision Blizzard product. They wanted me to host it. Riot told ESL that if I was hired to work that event, because it was such a threat to their brand, uh, they would pull the entire sponsorship away. And Intel Extreme Masters wouldn't have League of Legends anymore. So ESL paid me to not work an event. And everybody went along with it. Now, I didn't see a queue forming for old Richie Lewis. I didn't see a queue forming for old Richie Lewis when Activision Blizzard said we don't want him hosting the Overwatch event at E-League, even though I was the official hired host of E-League. Didn't see anybody coming out with signs for me, thoughts and prayers. Nah, you all laughed when you tried to take me off the Esports Awards panel because I wrote for Breitbart. What about that little campaign? Did anyone, anyone ever, you know, where were my thoughts and prayers? Oh, you didn't know? Well, I guess, I suppose, it's not like I need to live in a house. It's not like I need to eat food. Uh, it's not like I've got loved ones I need to give money. To. Oh, no, wait, I do have all those things. Oh, how interesting. It's almost as if we're in some way the same, and you showed me a complete lack of fucking empathy. Eh. Isn't that odd? So, no, 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 no. For that and many other reasons... No, no pity party here. But the way that it's been framed, uh, I mean, PC Gaming, like, they encapsulated the sort of hysteria with their headline. And this is kind of how you're, like, meant to be thinking about these things. Stunned devs left scrambling for livelihoods in wake of yesterday's layoff bloodbath. In the end, the contributions didn't matter. Yeah, that's pretty much how it works when you're when you're fired. Yeah, you're you're... Your contributions have been deemed irrelevant. Devs have found themselves adrift in the aftermath of swinging layoffs across Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox. The entire game industry is still reeling from yesterday's bombshell announcement that Microsoft, hot on the heels of its $69 billion acquisition of, of Activision, would be laying off 1,900 employees across Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox. Inevitably, Twitter is awash with reactions highlighting the human cost, both from dazed devs waking up in a world in which they no longer have jobs, and from others wondering what what this all means for the months and years ahead. The posts by former Blizzard devs are too many to count. After years of applying, wrote former quality assurance learning specialist Cole McElwain in a much retweeted post. I finally secure a job at Blizzard. I moved to California and I'm welcomed with an incredible team. I couldn't be more excited to start. Four months into the job, I'm laid off. What the hell, Microsoft? Because they got other people. They got their own people. I just don't know how to explain it. Other devs have been left in even more precarious situations. Shiro Fujita, former senior character artist working on Blizzard's now-cancelled survival game, 
Get to that in a sec. Wrote that, Blizzard was my dream company, but sadly today I got laid off with other incredibly talented people. By the way, you will notice all of these people are talented. <laughs> like, there's no, like, not what, not one of them? Not one of them was just dog shit, their job. Like, not one of them. No, they're all incredibly talented. They're all the best. Like, guys, come on. Let's fucking get in a cab and ask for fucking real street, for fuck's sake. Some of you had to be shit. Some of you had to be shit, surely. Like, uh, it, it would be, you would still, it would be kind of productive to fire all the amazing fucking people. Like, what are we talking about? Uh, whatever. Adding, he needed time to process events, but he had no time because I'm on a work visa. That really sucks. People who are brought in on work visas, it's happened to me. I, again, when I left E League, I had to get a new O1 work visa to go and work at WSOE in Vegas. And then they got me my work visa and I started working there. And by the way, while you're waiting for your visa, you're not allowed to earn any money from any other jobs or it's, it's illegal. So you have to just sit there in a total stasis, not allowed to work for the new company, not allowed to work for any other company, not allowed to go and get a part time job, can't even bag groceries down at the fucking walgreens or whatever can't even do that just got to sit there and wait and then it comes through and then wsoe well we i left wsoe as well uh and then I, and then i got seduced <laughs> i got lured in to a, a guy pre this is pre-pandemic vc money yeah listen come and join our company it's gonna be amazing we're gonna build this super cool thing you're gonna have a budget of 100 million dollars all right yeah cool uh all you gotta do is get me that work visa the work visa dragged on and on and on then the pandemic happened then they weren't processing any other ones and then the company said oh yeah the pandemic's gonna fuck us but we ain't doing that 100 million shit no more we don't even need you would you uh take a community manager's job for less than a mcdonald's salary <laughs> no, I don't think I will. And then I had 60 days to get the fuck out the country. Again, by the way, while all this was happening to me and losing my best friend and having all of that happen all at once, so uh, the, the loss of a friend, best friend, you know, who I lived with, uh, all of job problems, uh, having to leave the country. Do you know how many of my esports buddies that work at these companies, do you know how many of my games industry buddies reached out to try and help me? Like it would be less than 1%. <laughs> As I said, I really fucking found out who my friends were in that time. It was a joke. Again, no thoughts and prayers for old Richie. I couldn't help but notice. But anyway, it sucks. I can empathise for those people who are having to leave the country they wanted to live in. It's never nice. I don't know. Maybe them Democrats that you keep voting for, maybe they could, ooh, I don't know, do something with the visa laws. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah? Uh, anyway, bafflingly. The devs who learned they were laid off relatively early are the lucky ones. Per a tweet from Bloomberg's Jason Scryer, some devs found themselves reaching out to him, an unaffiliated reporter, to find out if they had kept their jobs or not amidst the chaos. That's Jason Scryer just saying, that's how fucking, I got my finger on the pulse me like. That people were reaching out to me. Definitely, totally not a narcissist. Putting myself in the center of the story. I mean, put it, that would, that just, I can't believe that actually happened. Like, like, you fucking, uh, Jason, hi. I know you're a totally unaffiliated. Am I fired? <laughs> like, I don't know. Ask somebody else is probably a better idea. Even more devs have reflected on the sheer years of experience that have gone to waste as the layoffs cut people loose. Olivia Burke, who works at Obsidian and was not part of the Blizzard layoffs, but worked at the company previously, wrote that the projects I gave four years of my life to while working at Blizzard were cancelled with essentially the whole team getting laid off. The industry really sucks sometimes. I know more people that lost jobs today than kept them. Another laid off dev, former principal sound designer Chris Kowalski, wrote, it was a good run 12 years at blizzard and just like that deactivated countless tools and audio systems in the end the contributions didn't matter at least i had fun and learned a ton i mean at least as well you had gainful employment at one of the biggest media companies ever for 12 years working on something you profess to enjoy i'm sure your fucking severance is going to be massive because you're one of the actual employees and probably you're going to either get given a, a bag of money to do a startup as always seems to happen to talented people when they leave or start your own studio or whatever it is right or you're gonna just walk into another job at another 
tech company doing sound design. It's not the end of the world, guys. Twelve. Year, most people don't get 12 years at a company anymore. That's completely abnormal. Some devs were led to wonder what the games industry is even going to look like as time wears on. I'd say Trimmer would be my guess. And even more layoffs sink their teeth in. In Exile Director of Communications, Micah Whipple, wrote that he started his career in Blizzard Tech Support, an entry-level job helping people get D2 and StarCraft running on their PCs. That path no longer exists. Maybe anywhere? I mean, listen, there's a point in that. Right? The days of climbing the corporate ladder are so fucking over. I mean, you all let them do this to you. You let these companies do this to you. You never go on strike over that was appearingly little things. I know how it works. I worked at these, I worked at companies. I'm Richie 100 jobs. Of course I worked at the companies. I know what it's like. I, look, I know about the fake secondments into management positions where they go, we can't pay you any money and you have to do your original duties, but you'll gain invaluable experience being a manager and when a vacancy opens you'll be a hot favorite to get in and then you go and you actually fucking apply for the job and the standard of an internal applicant compared to an external applicant is ridiculous and there's all internal politics and bullshit and also internal applicants on top of that generally get less salary uh, but they still hire externally a tale as old as fucking time and you don't go you don't get upset over that and you don't strike over that and you don't leave over that and you just tolerate it do you, remember, do you remember when you used to work a hard out nine to five with a lunch hour? It wasn't called a lunch break. No, 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 no. What are you doing in your lunch hour? Where did that phrase go? Oh, that's right. The lunch hour became a, 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 a 30 minute break with 215 mandated no more no longer timed by some card you have to swipe in a machine breaks and don't you ever have any more you fucking scum you pee on but but spoiler the company if you get a call at one minute to five or you have a task not finished by five o'clock you will be working unpaid overtime the company demands it you didn't go to strike over on that shit in fact you fucking you love these companies you say they're a cool place to work and then when you're fired oh now they suck but yeah, the path, the path to, you know, oh, wow, I started out at the lowest rung of the ladder and now I'm the CEO. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore, dickhead. What happened is they, too many of them, every time one of you fucking ascended t to the top, what did you do? You fucking, you took some dynamite and you blew that fucking pathway up because you don't want the competition. Holy shit. If I could get, if I could wriggle through that near impossible network of tunnels, a competitor to me could do it. Well, we can't have that. I love my six-figure salary and company car and subsidised housing and performance bonus. I love all them things. Can't have any of you getting it. Kaboom. And now no one gets it. Again, you did it. It just wasn't you, you. It was past you. A version of you. That's why it doesn't exist. Again, you'll notice the language. The sheer brutality and nonsensical nature of the layoffs was hammered home yesterday. Again, why are these layoffs nonsensical? Like, do, did the company have to go under? Are you owed a job? Uh, is, are they obligated to employ you for some reason? Why are they nonsense? Uh, the sheer brutality and nonsensical nature of the layoffs was hammered home yesterday by the concurrent headlines announcing that Microsoft, which was with Apple for first place's most valuable company on earth, had briefly become the second company in human history to cross a $3 trillion market cap. The notion that a company of this staggering scale had no alternative but to cut 1,900 people free of their livelihoods was more than a little hard to swallow, and the absurdity was highlighted in a tweet from former Blizzard senior designer Jorge Murillo, who shared his last message sent in the company slack look i'm just happy we were able to provide some value to the shareholders which again yeah they have shareholders fiduciary duty it's the big cudgel but you know i don't see anyone objecting to it when they let the investors in oh wow what well, so my salary goes up and uh, i gotta work on a new cool project oh yeah this is wicked this is wicked damn those shareholders now that people have to be they want more money they want theirs Right? This is the if you're gonna if you're gonna play these fucking games, you're gonna get got. The system's broke, guys. <laughs> so anyway, there was that. As as it was alluded to as well, they also cancelled an entire new game. Just stopped. Blizzard cancelled survival game had been in development for over six years. Was highly praised by employees. Right, so I mean, listen, it was a survival game. You can see, Blizzard's an un unnamed uh, survival game. 
had already been in development for over four years when it was announced in early 2022. Its team doubled in size. <gasps> Could this be a problem? Uh, that year with plans to grow to even more in 2023. Now, after over six years of total development time and positive responses to the project from current and former Blizzard employees, the game has been cancelled by Microsoft and its developers are out of jobs. I've been let go from Blizzard along with many, many others on the survival team, wrote Matt London, the game's former associate of narrative director on X today. Uh, other Blizzard survival games developers who announced their departures were Marby Kwong, Atas Bayrak, Renato Iwashima, Michael Dale, Mateus Lima, Rachel Quitevis, and Megan Embry, who had worked at Blizzard for 13 years. And again, it's the tenor of this coverage. It was, you're, you're merging with Microsoft. Why would Microsoft be like, yeah, I know we've uh, acquired Blizzard and everything, but uh, again, we've played no part in developing. That's ultimately going to represent us when we release it uh, gem generally. Uh, we, uh, yeah, let's finish this actually. Let's finish it at expense to us. Might not be part of our marketing strategy, might not be part of where we want to go. You can't be serious. The minute Bobby Kotick, and by the way, let me explain how actually the Activision Blizzard employees did it to themselves. You're going to go, wow, Rich, there's no fucking way. Here's how they did it to themselves. When all of that horrible, heinous shit was going on at the company, all of the mistreatment of women, the sexual harassment, in some cases sexual abuse, the Bill Cosby suite, all of the, the all of these, uh, the guy who was named after, they named McCree after, all, all of this stuff. When all of that was happening, where were any of you? Why weren't you leaking this to journalists? Why weren't you speaking out about it publicly? Why were you not? I mean, if you're too afraid to speak out publicly, but you know it's happening, and many, many people did. Indeed, one of the most common responses when this all started coming out was people going, yeah, I'm finally glad. Why didn't you tell someone? Why didn't you just go anonymously to a journalist? They were putting cameras in women's toilets. There was breast milk being stolen. These stories can be told. You don't even have to give your name. But nobody did it. You know why they didn't do it. No one wants to rock the boat. If it's not happening to them, it's not happening. And so they sat there working at that company, knowing all that stuff's going on, knowing that Bobby Kotick threatened to kill one of his fucking female assistants, you know, knowing all of this stuff that came out. And they said nothing. And they did nothing. And then somebody said, I'm going to do something. And then the Department of Employment in the state of California conducted their investigation and they didn't fuck around. And Activision Blizzard HR said they complied. Oh, but some documents might get accidentally shredded and all of this stuff. I covered this from start to fucking finish. When they released their report, it was over for your company. You lost all your sponsors in esports. Investors were suing Bobby Kotick and suing Activision Blizzard for sitting on that and saying everything was going to be okay because now it, the share price plummeted and the shareholders don't like it when the share price plummets and that's the only reason Bobby Kotick had a job for as long as he did. Everybody knew he was a piece of shit, but he was allowed to keep his job for as long as he did because share goes up. It was that simple. And again, you all love that. Wow, I'm working at a company. Look at the share value. I've got shares in the company. This is great. Wasn't great for the women. Wasn't great for that woman who killed herself. Wasn't great for her family. But y'all worked there and y'all said nothing. Y'all did nothing. Y'all couldn't even find a time of day to pick up a fucking phone to a journalist and anonymously tell someone. So the headlines came out and the report came out and then you were done. Your share price dropped to such a point it would... Right, prior to those headlines, it would have been unthinkable that Microsoft could have bought Activision Blizzard. But once it dropped to where it dropped to, they were able to do a predatory takeover. Bobby Kotick brought you to that. But prior to Bobby Kotick bringing you to that, Bobby Kotick and his culture of bullshit at the company, all of your silence really played a part, didn't it? Weird how that works out. Some people might call that karmic retribution. I don't know. I'm not one of those people. But again, I am not going to sympathize. You wouldn't have got bought out by Microsoft if you'd sorted your shit out instead of giggling about it or or, or whispering about it. Or, and that guy's a creep. And it's terrible how they're treating you. Know, you didn't do enough. And now you got got. Why, why do I sympathize again? So that's pretty much covered. The people that took pandemic jobs thinking they would last forever, a.k.a. dummies, 
and people who worked at the company and, and contributed to a culture of silence around abuse of their colleagues. I, get, I'm fine. I'm sleeping like a baby tonight, guys. That's how babies sleep. We, we sleep pretty. We all know about post birth sleep apnea. Yeah, not losing. I'm not losing a single solitary fucking wink over your jobs being got, actually. I will say one employee stuck it to Activision Blizzard. A Blizzard employee snagged a decade of WoW game time just before being laid off and won't have to pay a cent until 2033. Got him. Take that. Take that. I'm doing this for the 1900. Uh, he did a tweet. Once I realised what was happening and that I was going to be laid off, I made sure to jump into Keyring and use all the one-year subscription codes I had left. And there it is. Well done. You got him. He made out like a bandit. Well, any problem is, you've now got to play World of Warcraft for another fucking 10 years. Enjoy. Also, what a dumb thing to do. I'll just tweet about it. Yeah. yeah. There, there could just be some petty vindictive manager at one of these companies. and di There you go. Now now you have nothing. I will say, there were some good people that got fired. I nearly didn't do the, the positives. Uh, so let's do the positives. Sui, who we've talked about on stream a bunch. She actually, as I said before, one of the reasons that she... It was always sort of complicated and our relationship is kind of complicated in terms of like, I praise her work. She's very gracious to me. I'm pretty sure she could never like come out and say something amazing or retweet an article or whatever because she worked at Activision Blizzard and they fucking despise me. Uh, but she did work directly for the company. And, you know, what a great hire and what a great servant she'd been. Not just Activision Blizzard, but particularly to the Overwatch brand. I said it a bunch of times. She was one of the best fucking things about that league. And I know she's going to uh, continue to get hired. But anyway, she's a great person and uh, super talented and anyway after seven years of service i've been laid off by blizzard it was a dream come true to work there and i'm saddened that my time is cut short yes i was ready for this call with champagne gotta celebrate the good times and opportunities i had what's next i am available i will say this because of the broader you know issue of the saudi takeover of esports it can be incredibly complicated i never and i mean never i'm going to criticize someone just for taking work from the ESL uh, face it group. I, I am certainly going to point out the hypocrites and the people who've painted themselves in a corner, and I'm certainly going to be calling out all of the companies again in June, in June, when they all post rainbow flags. But I understand that if you want to work in this space now, the, mo the money is all compromised. And it's easy for me... A man who spent 10, 11, fuck, it's like 13 years now building a personal brand on the side to all of my work. So in the event I ever didn't have a job, I could go independent and still earn enough money to live. It was an investment in my future self that paid off because of you guys. Uh, and I told all of my colleagues at the time, like, you need to do this too. And they, and obviously most of them didn't. And so because of that, a lot of people are in this tough situation now where they'd really rather not work for the Saudis, but they can't say that and they're going to have to. And, and that's fine. You know, I'm not going to lash out at those people. They certainly didn't spend their time sermonizing about how I'm a piece of shit. They never took food off my table, a lot of them. So, you know, we're all making tough decisions. Anyway, she's great. All the industry people that watch my shit. I know it's a ton of you. Uh, if you're thinking about hiring somebody, she's got so many talents, hidden talents, talents Activision Blizzard criminally underutilized. She's musical. She can she can do it all. She can sing. She can dance. She can write the theme tune. She can interview. She can host. She's great. Just please, 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 someone uh, pick her up. Anyway, the other one as well, you know, Mr. X, Matt Morello. Just can't speak highly enough of the, about this guy as well. Unfortunately, today, along with a lot of uh, other amazing esports folks, I've been let go from Blizzard, casting Overwatch and working behind the scenes, planning some of the best years we've had with Overwatch esports, and the upcoming year with the new OWCS was a dream come true. Hopefully, I can still say, stay involved with the Overwatch scene in the future, but if anyone wants to chat product, production, talent work, email is in my bio. And that's the thing you have to understand with Matt. He's not just a fucking fantastic caster. Like, listen, I'm 
some of the best casters I've ever worked with, they only really understand casting. They only really understand the art of commentary. And that's fine. That's all they really need to understand. But Matt is not one of those dudes. He understands the art of commentary to, like, an elite level. But he also understands, you know, this is a guy who knows about production, knows about, like, you know, how to make a show better or implement an idea. And, take. you know, this is a really smart, switched-on dude who has, like, a bright future in ever doing that if he decides to put down the microphone. I don't know why he would put down the microphone uh, because he's still at the top of his game. And Overwatch is very lucky to have him. And again, I don't envision a world where he's not working the OWCS. And just to underline it, the big esports gamble didn't really pay off for Activision Blizzard in any way, shape, or form. The Bobby Kotick wet dream of endless money didn't come true. They didn't listen to the sage council of endemic esports people and instead listened to the greedy grifter class and tried to do something that was completely unsustainable uh, and was doomed from the start. And as a result, they've ultimately laid off you know pretty much all their esports employees now you can see here this is that division blizzard esports department clobbered by layoffs again it's pc gamers so they're very sympathetic Activision blizzard has laid off a lot of esports related employees according to matt morello person close to the matter tells pc gamer these cuts will put all part of the 1900 microsoft announced last week which have already hit Activision blizzard hard and included the cancellation of blizzard survival game as we've talked about According to the source, Activision Blizzard's esports programs are going forward as planned, uh, despite the cuts. Cuts also include Overwatch and Call of Duty League's observer teams, who are responsible for controlling spectator cameras and other aspects of esports broadcasting. The observer teams for both OWL and CDL did so much behind the scenes for their leagues, their esports, and their games that many people won't ever know, wrote the observer manager, Jess DePaula. I'm devastated. So, I mean, this is another thing. I don't understand why, of all the people that you're going to get rid of, observers seem so batshit insane to me like you're gonna get rid of the observers like literally the one thing you you can certainly say about overwatch is it's a nightmare to look at but their observers at least make it like passable and so uh, it's crazy and riot games have done the same uh, as as we're about to get to and it's just like i don't know maybe don't cut them but what that suggests to me is that they're just scaling down the production levels of the esports broadcasts that they're gonna that they're gonna work with. They're gonna keep a few esports people around. Pretty much, they will no doubt be working in partnership with the OWCS and therefore ESL and Face It, and that will be their primary roles. And the production and all that stuff is now all on them. So your observers are just gone. That's that. Again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shed too many tears. I'm not gonna do it. There are some good people that have definitely been laid off. There are also some fucking shitlords that have been laid off. And actually, lol, fuck you. Let's move on to Riot. Riot, as I said, they did a bunch of layoffs. Now, this is kind of interesting because a few people, including the guy who basically wants a career, like he, he has no sources, doesn't like do anything of any merit, isn't a journalist, hasn't had any training or anything as far as I can tell, hasn't had a job, but he had the most success ever in his life uh, rewriting an article I wrote about uh, Danny, which he then immediately had to correct four times. Guy called Arse Boyle, I think his name is. And uh, anyway, he's talking about rewriting this one because apparently I've got a number of details wrong and I'm, I, I really, for the life of me, uh, can't think what it is I've got wrong in this report or what those details would be. Uh, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see when he does eventually rewrite my article, what his sources, which probably aren't my sources, have said is wrong and, as he put it, like easy to fact check and correct. Because I obviously spent the entire, I spent my weekend interviewing all the people uh, at Riot and uh, associated with the LEC and people who've been laid off to compile uh, report over at my substack which you can see here now the long and the short of it is you know that the layoffs happened and we'll just scroll to the middle of the article uh first you can see here these were all of the people just in lec that got laid off and there was actually i think another another three more after that and this was compiled of all things by a vtuber called by the way blue woo esports <laughs> so they, they were essentially down like one 
Observer or maybe two. And there was genuine fears about the broadcast. In the build-up to the layoffs, many were left uncertain about what was happening. Internally, staff had started to spread word that something might be happening, but it wasn't sure which departments or regions would be severely affected. Several of the people working on LEC we spoke to said they were left in limbo while they awaited their fate, some of whom had been told not to worry prior to being fired. Uh, of particular note uh, seems to be the sheer number of employees working on the EA EMEA side of the broadcast who had had no information about the upcoming cuts several said that their primary source of information as to what was happening at the company were their lec colleagues who had been communicated with directly and this seems to be a quirk of like they said here it was to do with like the german law and that everyone had to get emails saying that they might be impacted but they have to give you a one-on-one -on -one, uh, phone call to to confirm one way or the other that's that's the law they've got to tell you over the phone uh, in an individual basis anyway the general consensus from speaking to those who worked and are still working on the lec is that if anything they were understaffed prior to the layoffs many explained that they weren't just performing their job title but worked in several other capacities and not just for lec either many staff worked across lec the emea broadcast and other global projects such as msi regional leagues or even valorant in some cases when required it was also repeated several times by remaining staff members that none of this seems to have been factored in when making the decisions to let people go and now many are having to pick up even more slack to make the broadcast work at one point there was a belief that a week of the lec could have ended up being postponed but that was averted due to a reassignment of labor even then there remain concerns about the quality of the upcoming broadcast due to the reduction in manpower uh, we're not going to have to postpone the LEC broadcast, but we've been working overtime at the expense of our mental health to make it happen. An employee that works in LEC informed us. The observers that we lost have worked on every LEC and international show for close to the past seven years. To have global leadership decide who gets cut when they've probably never even watched LEC and wrote off positions not realizing that, that there are crew members for global events is a joke. And then uh, it also goes on, based on what was shared with this publication, it seems the culture around LEC had become one of overworking, uh, with one employee likening it to a permanent type of crunch. Everyone has two or even three jobs here, they explain. The working hours are insane, but if you don't do it, they will hire someone else who will. Everyone wants to work at Riot because it looks good on your employment record, so you have to be irreplaceable. Even then, that hasn't worked because I've seen irreplaceable people be fired. And there's, like, some other stuff in here about how like that you have to agree to like doing whatever your line managers say otherwise they factor into your performance bonus so essentially it's like if you don't do the extra that they ask they say you underperformed in the job you do well it's the additional stuff they sort of judge you on and then they reduce your bonus if you say no it's by the way that's also a tale as old old as time in in companies i've worked at before so it wouldn't surprise me here's the kicker they laid off all of those people put the broadcast in jeopardy and then they had to fly in a bunch of people from the uh, striker broadcast facility in dublin and from los angeles so in other words they spent money on flights and hotels while paying the people they laid off and they had to do it because it would have been a disaster if they'd let it go on. They also cut the pre and post shows, had no writers or producers for creative segments, and scale back the scope of in-game replays. So in other words, they made the layoffs, realized they'd laid off too many people, had to go out and get hires. And this is where one of the bones of contention seems to be, because apparently Rich's Wrath, as he's now known, he'll always be H2K Rich to me. Uh, you'll know him from the Four Horsemen and Side select i believe is the name of his podcast he's done some content with thorin obviously he said that actually people weren't flown in from america but that uh is I, I again not only do i have it from like four or five sources that they did bring in people from america and it might even be a freelance observer that they brought in i also had people reach out after i published this to tell me yeah 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 they flew people in so, again, this is what I mean. I think what's happened is everyone is fucking scrambling around. No one knows what's going on. And no doubt some people have contradicted what 
my sources have said in the reporting, and then uh, a goblin like Ars Boyle thinks, ah, I finally got Richard now, I will rewrite his article and insert one or two quotes and then say he was wrong, and finally I will have destroyed his 100% record. That's what I think's actually happened. But I stand by my reporting as always. I believe my sources are impeccable. I've got no reason to deny uh to to rather uh, not believe multiple sources saying the same thing all independently of each other it just it, it's just standard reporting procedure that i would not include something had it not been specifically repeated by multiple sources so i saw it yeah there was a french guy uh crow crow said it was a great article and thanked me for writing it but then somebody had told him same thing oh it was one or two things that aren't right and he said people from the lec told him that first of all i don't think there's anything that contentious or surprising in there i also don't know how given that People are talking about personal experiences and what they've undergone and what the work environment is like from their perception. I really don't know what it is you could say that's wrong. But anyway, forget that. The point being, they've essentially shit the bed. Uh, and now it gets interesting because I'm being told that next week, next weekend for the next LEC broadcast, some of those people who came to like bail them out aren't going to be there. And I think VCT is happening at the same time. So, let's see. Because uh, everybody was praising the event and saying, wow, they've done a good job in a difficult circumstance. I totally agree as well. It's never nice to be in the middle of one of these things. But yeah, they certainly uh, look to have shit the bed on this. And, it's, and, and also, there was like a little unwritten thing that kept coming up, which I just put one line about it in the, in the report. But people was kind of alluding to the fact that they didn't make all these cutoffs at LCS. LCS had all of them changes. It's hemorrhaging viewership. It, you know they've had to cut the size of the league. They didn't. They didn't make any staffing cuts to the same degree as what they did with LEC. And people are kind of implying that you know, oh, it's fucking, it's that old NA bias at Riot again. You know, it, it, it's a, it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But anyway, so that's what happened at the LEC. And naturally, you know, there was uh, some, uh, there was like other emerging stories kind of coming out. Other rioters were going out and kind of saying like, oh, I can't believe it. Look what's happening. And I did, I did grab a, a few funny ones. Okay, well, actually, it's mainly one funny one that I just wanted to include. I don't know if you know who like Riot Tizer is or was. He's not Riot Tizer anymore. He was an insufferable prick. Was in on all that Reddit drama bullshit uh, back in the day. JT Vandenbury is his name. He's been at Riot for nearly 12 years. So you, can, you can't you can even begin to imagine what level of cultist bullshit that guy was on. And he was in, like, he was the league operations co coordinator and all of that stuff while he, was, while he was at the time. Now, he was in on all of that fucking, you know, bullshit when it was all popping off on fucking Reddit and was in the, like, moderators, like, ears and all that. Like, just an arsehole. Just a fucking classic little red T-shirt wearing goon who used to turn up to these fucking events and lord it up over people and again we're about to take a turn on that so watch this space uh fucking couldn't stand this guy and he couldn't and you know he said stuff about me and whatever but anyway he's been fired and it's just like fucking lol and 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 he is going to be the case study he's going to be the case study of how these cults give you nothing in the end uh because Imagine giving 12 years over to a cult, the cult of rioteology, and they treat you like this. And he said, Riot is immediately hiring on the internal job board for a bunch of esports operation roles of people that were just laid off on a similar salary range, and I'm just sitting here wondering why. We were literally sitting right there before they laid us off. Yeah, it, it's almost as if Riot... It, it's a, only the it's like think about it think about scientology think about who gets to charge you to uh, clear out your thetans and just with one dollar or ten thousand dollars you can get to the next level and maybe you'll go clear but you never get to go clear at riot games because you're not mark merrill you're not Brandon Beck. You're not all these other people that are apparently immune to any form of accountability for all the decisions that they've done 
you have basically given 12 years of your life to a regime that doesn't care about you. And by the way, much like another regime historically, you're going fa- to you're going to see Mark Merrill in photos wearing a big overcoat and you're going to be airbrushed out of them. You're just not going to be in the photos. You're now an ex-rioter. There's only one thing rioters despise more than non-rioters, ex-rioters, because you failed. You failed to ascend in the cult. Right now, they will be talking about you and how actually it's a good thing you're gone. God, we got rid of him. But you were out there, the good little soldier, weren't you? The whole time, doing riots bidding, spreading lies and rumours about non-rioters, trying to ruin their careers. Then, hilariously, Richard, you can't call riot games a cult all the time. Tell me what this sounds like. Did you know... This is Tizer again. He's popping off now. He's got things to say about Riot now that he's been fired. Did you know that all rioters are banned from Riot camps for a minimum of 12 months after being laid off? And after that, they are subject to security approval. That's a little bit more than one month for each year I work there. See, you you guys probably don't even think too much about these things. You don't you don't remember these things that are just there that everybody knows. To get into Riot, to go and have a tour of Riot games. You have to, first of all, pass, like, their security checks and be approved. And then you have to sign an NDA to even be in the building. And the NDA lasts three years. And they say that is because we've uh, the, way we, the way our campus works, you might just walk around and see projects. And we don't want any of our proprietary technology or future IP getting leaked. But let me also tell you how I know this is a cult. Think of the framing of his tweet. Has anyone here been fired, lost a job, or left a job? Right, well, some of you, all three, I'd I'd wager. At any point, do I get to go back to the office? (laughs) At any point, do I get to go back to the factory? Do I just, can can I just come back? Listen, guys, I I, I fucking hate you, and you fired me. um, But I'd love to come back sometime and just walk around and distract people. No, of course you don't get to go you don't get to go back you don't get to do that but he expects to cuz he gave 12 years of his life to the regime he hasn't even been deprogrammed yet he's got to the stage of criticism he doesn't believe in xenu anymore but he has not been deprogrammed from the fundamental truths of riotology it has, the penny hasn't dropped yet they don't give a fuck about you homie they never did They never did. It's riot. It was there to serve the ego and vanity of three men that then became two men and then became many men. That was the company. They were a cult that made a video game. I don't know how you think this story was supposed to end. So I I have have enjoyed that. I have enjoyed seeing these people go, you know, because that meme is shit like leopards ate my face. I can't believe leopards ate my face, says person who voted for face-eating leopards party. It's a shit meme. It's not funny. But um, it's like milkshake duck. This is not a thing. It's just some liberal wanker trying to sound clever. But here's what what I will say. That ultimately, seeing these people have to learn, have have to go through it. Yeah, actually, it's actually a good feeling for me. You people needed this lesson in life. I'm not going to sympathize for you. And I wrote an article about it. I wrote an article about that uh, that very phenomenon. Because I don't think people quite understand. And it's particularly true with Riot. And I've said before, I've told stories. You know, when I was at an, when I was at an after party, at, uh, it was probably an Intel Extreme Masters cologne. So it was at Gamescom as well. They had an after party, and it was being run by one of the sponsors. That's also typical for esports. Sponsor will do the after party. And it was like, you know, it was like your first two drinks free, and there was a bar, and it was running late. You know, League of Legends had been on, because obviously it was like, you know, Gamescom, IEM, Cologne. And there was a ton of rioters at the event. It started with, they took over the press room. So I'm a journalist at this point. I've got a laptop. I've got work to do. I've got deadlines to hit. I need peace and quiet so I can think and write. And because they hadn't, the Riot Games executives, these were the executives, 
Um, I actually know exactly what which one of the executives, but names never play well in stories like this. But as you say, very high up executives at that time. You know, and the, the type that come with events in a, in a shirt, not the red T-shirt that they make the peons wear. And they came in to, they, they, they weren't happy with the space they've been given to watch the game. So they came into the press room and said, what about this? And the member of ESL said, this is the press room. And they said, yeah, it's perfect. And so they had ESL staff bring in a giant fuck-off television, as big as the one in my cinema room. They brought it into the press room, put the volume up to 100, and then sat at the back of the press room watching the League of Legends games when they were on stage just round the corner. And they thought that was just a reasonable thing to do. I joked about it. I thought, I'll try and break the ice. Maybe I can get them to turn it down or something. So I made a joke about it. And uh, they, they, they said exactly what Mark Merrill said to Don that time. I said, oh, yeah, must be nice to just be able to take over the press room. Something like that. And they said, well, yeah, we did make the game. And then the other one went, you're welcome. I assume you're writing about it, yeah? That was their attitude. But I thought, well, you know, fuck it. It's just Riot Games executives. Obviously, all executives are fucking cunts. You know, what are you going to do? But then the after party happened. And remember, the after party wasn't even being run by ESL. It was being run by one of ESL sponsors. And the rioters arrived. And they were all in their red t-shirts. There was a huge queue at the bar because it's an esports after party. They're always understaffed and everyone's an alcoholic because everyone hates their job and hates this industry. Everyone's queuing up and the rioters refused. Everyone in a red t-shirt was going, oh, we get to go straight to the front. We work for Riot. So, this is this sponsor's after party. There's no fucking, no rank pulling here. No, 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 we work for Riot. So our game's on that stage. So if we want drinks, we get to go to the front. All of them. And these were like just fucking peasants, you know, like just like the lowest rung of the ladder. But they were that fucking indoctrinated already. That's how they behaved. I saw a woman elbow someone in the side and tell them to fuck off out of her way wearing a riot t-shirt i saw guys uh, just aggressively like going round to the back of the bar berating staff and not serving them saying if you see a red t-shirt you serve us first it was i was like it was it was the moment where it all changed for me about how i interacted with riot it had been fun and jokey up until that point but when I saw what their culture was like and how it was metastasizing to the rest of the esports industry and being normalized by all the fucking weaklings and cowards that wouldn't just say fuck off to a Riot person because League of Legends was overtaking StarCraft and it was the big show and so you had to make that money. So all these people were enabled, by the way. If you went against Riot, it doesn't matter who you are or what your reasons were, you didn't just get got by Riot. You didn't just get blacklisted by Riot. ESL had to have a word with you. Yeah, they had to pull you at one side. Like, Richard, is there any way we can make you stop criticizing Riot? It's making our, it's making hiring you really difficult. I'm not going to do that. Same company, ESL, by the way. Think they can pick up a phone and talk to my editor to have a story about them not paying players pulled. Is there any way we, you can just get them to delete that story? Because it makes us look bad and the sponsors are asking questions. Yeah, that's how journalism works in their brain. They're all like that. That's what I mean. I, I, there's not a single tear rolling down my cheek. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to read you what I wrote about it, it actually surprised me how much I fucking couldn't stand. I, like, I, how I cannot, I've grown to not be able to uh, stand my peer group now. Again, this doesn't apply to everyone. It's not about everyone in esports. It's not about everyone in video games. But I know the, I know who these people are. I know who I'm writing about. And they know who they are. And they know I'm writing about them. And the, the good people, I'm not writing about you. No need to get offended. But here it is. No, I don't want to come to your pity party. As I'm sure you're all aware, uh, the past few months have been an almost unprecedented number of layoffs at both games developers and esports companies. It currently feels like every time I open X.com for my hourly doom scroll posts of people saying farewell to their employees and getting in the way of my World War Three coverage. Those who aren't fired all say the same things. Thoughts and prayers to all those affected. Or oh, these people are irreplaceable. Or oh, wow. Who would have thought the big corporation would be ungrateful to its workers? It's happening so often, it's just become a reflex ritual that everyone goes through. Not me, though. 
While my journalism will always be a platform for those impacted by these things to talk about what is happening behind the scenes, as a person with close to 20 years of having to deal with these indoctrinated dunderheads, I struggle to sympathise. Even if I overlook, which no one should, the fact many of these individuals took jobs in what was clearly an unsustainable boom period, being one of the few who managed to spin the horror of a global pandemic into an opportunity, I will not overlook the behaviour the majority of these people have exhibited. You know what I'm talking about. It's the great unspeaking truth of the games industry. Once you're aligned with someone that has influence, that can flex a little bit of power to get what they want, you all do it as often as possible. The rest of us have to walk around on eggshells, terrified to offend any one of you in your little branded t-shirts, lest it leads to career jeopardy. You all love that part. You all love the illusion of importance. You're not so fond of accountability or repercussions. It's the old reaping and sowing paradigm. I'm so past the bullshit, so consider this an open letter to all of you seeking gainful employment right now, and hopefully it helps you understand why many of us won't be attending the pity party. For example, perhaps I'd have felt more sympathy if working at a games company suddenly didn't mean you became a member of the Twitterati police force. I have to wonder if there's a rule that you can't bring any other hobbies with you when you start working for one of these companies. Upon arrival, your spare time is suddenly filled with only one of two things, either self-fellation about how fucking awesome you and your colleagues are, or screeching about how someone who coincidentally doesn't work at your company should be cast out of the industry. For us, on the outside, we watch a kind of wanker's personality factory, where you go in as a relatively well-adjusted person, sit on a conveyor belt where your brain is bombarded with corporate and California bullshit, then you come out the end as a tiresome blue-haired woke scold that never even thinks about shutting the fuck up for even just one day. And because of your association with the company that is a major player, you get away with it. Every time you're insufferable, no one points it out. You are pandered to right up until the moment you leave the room, and then everyone breathes a sigh of relief and talks about what a fucking drag you are. Then let's talk about the secret blacklist you all run in this industry, where you anonymously smear broadcast talent, journalists, streamers, and anyone else that you feel like. Speaking as someone who has been threatened with the old you're not making any friends spiel from games developers, let me also share a few of the other greatest hits that you're all complicit in. I know colleagues who were smeared as drug addicts in emotional basket cases for having the temerity to refuse to sleep with your precious executives who turn up to after parties and behave as if they're Drake. I've seen colleagues have to be told they can't attend gaming events because the developer doesn't want them in the building due to some mild criticism of their shit games. Speaking from personal experience, for the mere act of telling the truth about the fucked up companies you all enable, I've been blacklisted, threatened, censored, and on multiple occasions even had work I was contractually hired to do taken away from me. I didn't see a line forming for the Solidarity Party when that was happening to me, despite you being the exact people my reporting is designed to help. Now you're in the unemployment line. Boo fucking who. And no... You don't just get to blame the executives and walk away clean on this one. It's you, the rank and file, who gather the intel, feed the gossip up the chain of command, hoping for a promotion or to be bestowed with crony job security. I've seen so many of my colleagues brought to the brink of insanity as they try to relentlessly correct the record about themselves and in turn secure their careers, but you always seem to be on hand with a new lie or exaggeration to make that a remote possibility. Why do you behave this way? I'll tell you, working at one of these companies, whether you want to admit it to yourself or not, is the closest you will ever get to being able to wield real power over people, and you simply can't resist doing it. However, yours is a mafia of the mediocre, and when all is said and done, bigger forces will take away what little influence you have, be it a merger, a mass layoff, a game being shut down, a new technology being replaced by AI, then you're back out in the yard with all the people you fucked over. If all you get is gloating, you're getting off light. You know... 
I wouldn't mind so much if any of your secret blacklists actually caught any of the perverts, predators, and bigots that infest your company, but they never seem to for some reason. Instead, every month we have to watch as another one of your lot is exposed and you all pretend you never saw it coming, when, in reality, it would only take you two drinks to start babbling about what a creep they were. When too many of them congregate in desirable job positions, then and only then do you seem to have that clean out, where after a period of trying to smash unions and intimidate the complainants, the company writes a big check signed, fuck off, and then you all come out and bleat about how the company has finally changed. The most embarrassing part of all this is that the moment you are eventually let go, the prospect of having to get a real job immediately deprograms you. You're suddenly self-aware again and can talk casually, joke about how shitty the company you work for actually is, see how much you've missed talking to all your friends, but it's just so complicated. You were right, you'll say. It was like being in a cult. I've had that conversation well over a hundred times now and I'm fucking bored of it. You're all doing it now, posting publicly about how you believe, can't believe the company who has fucked over a million people before you is now for some reason fucking you. How could this happen, you whale? Yeah, if only there were some clues to what your eventual fate might be. As for the eSports set, it's even harder to sympathise. I mean, everyone knows this industry's been one big lie since about 2017. If it was a successful space, why are you all being paid as contractors? Why do these companies have to tether themselves to every get-rich-quick lifeline that appears? Why does it turn out that when you divide your salary by how many hours you work, you realise you'd be better off bagging groceries? Why are so many of these eSports companies hiring their friends and family on six-figure salaries while paying you a pittance? Who are they? The government? It was all fun and games when you were hired on a bullshit contract to go and work in a needlessly expensive office that came with the accompanying YouTube tour. Wow, they have a foosball table and bean bags. Ain't it the coolest? You don't even have a supervisor and no one even notices if you do your job or not. You can flip off the world. You made it. It's going to last forever. Except... It never does. And now you're stuck in one of the world's most expensive cities with no job, no savings, and no one else hiring. You got sold down the river by either a brain-dead bro CEO or a man having a midlife crisis using venture capital to live out their sports owner fantasies. And absolutely everyone outside of your bubble saw it coming. Ask yourself this simple question. Does a business that has had tens of millions of dollars of investment provided without any real demand for a return on it deserve pity when it fails? You'd all be chortling into your latte foam if it was a company you didn't like, like one owned by Elon Musk. Yet, that is the reality of the esports industry. We did make it. I was there. Then I watched a group of mostly American morons piss unprecedented amounts of money up against the wall for no other reason except they wanted to have bragging rights over their fellow owners. It was them who deceived the sponsors. It was them who fudged the numbers in the reports. It was them who inflated the salaries. And it was them that crashed the industry. And now esports is a dirty word, and those people who could have underwritten this industry for decades are never coming back. If there's one thing I can tell you about the cartel that took over esports, it's that they all think of themselves as being political masterminds. If only you could hear them talk as I've had to down the years. It's always cemented my belief that if politics is show business for ugly people, then esports is politics for stupid people. They spend their time moving meaningless pieces around a board that can get flipped over at any time, and they tilt at imaginary enemies just to feel in charge. They leverage any small piece of influence they can to fuck over competitors, while publicly proclaiming there's enough pie to go around for everyone, just so long as they get to be Jason Biggs and stick their dick in it. And the funny part of it all is for all their posturing, they repeatedly lost hand after hand in the most basic of poker stare downs of all time. You see, the fundamental problem esports has had for the past six years is that these executives keep slapping a for sale sign on every facet of it, which is was an easily understood contradiction to the declaration that we were never better. With this being grasped by anyone with even the most basic of business acumen, the latest round of bidding has been conservative and measured by previous standards. After having witnessed our industry leaders burn through that unprecedented amount of venture capital, only to build absolutely nothing but extensions on their houses, esports is back to being offered the scraps from a table it is never going to be invited back to. 
It kind of tells you everything that the average tournament operator pays out hundreds of thousands of dollars to create a high quality broadcast, but is then so insecure about viewing numbers, they hand it over to some quasi literate co streamer who simply shows the exact same broadcast and occasionally grunts over the top of the audio. That right there is the tacit admission that we know what we have really isn't worth shit. That we'd run it in airport lounges if it was uh, if it still allowed us to package those numbers in sponsor decks so we could run the same old tired grift. And now everyone's selling out to the Saudis after years of your bogus sermonizing about how much you champion those that unjust societies would harm. You take a paycheck from one of the world's biggest human rights violators. It comes natural, I guess, as you all lost your tongues over Uyghur Muslims being rounded up and put in re-education camps because that would mean you couldn't do business in China. I hope there's a moment when you performatively post your rainbow flags this June that you all see yourselves for how utterly pathetic you all are. The nerve of you to talk down to me and my peers about how complicated it is and how you've got a business to run and families to feed when you've never given a single consideration of how that reality applies to everyone you bulldozed over so you could get a fake Forbes valuation. You will never get to lecture anyone ever again about anything. And the best part is that I know for all the money you're going to make, it is that fact that really upsets you. For years, you've all been part of something that started out pure and became malignant. A few of you were just unfortunately caught up in the web of bullshit and could certainly be viewed as victims in all of this. Some of you were just ignorant. Many of you, though, actively pushed it in that direction, driven by vanity and greed. Whichever you were, it's best to recognize that you were ultimately just a cog in a machine that once used to serve consumers and enthusiasts. It stopped doing that a while ago, and I can't shed a tear now I'm watching that machine break down and fall apart. I'd use the time about your contribution to that reality between filling in ap application forms. And there it is. Not many people liked reading that. That was a splash of cold water to the face. But that is tr all of it. True. Completely true. Completely inarguable. And this is why the industry, it needed a clean out. It does need a clean out. It does need to be streamlined. I'll also just add as well, which is it, guys? Is, it, is Bidenomics good? <laughs> or are all these layoffs happening because the economy's bad? I mean, if the economy is fine guys and you keep saying it is you walk into another job stop worrying don't worry about it that's bidenomics homie colbert told me number go up mean good and he's talking about unemployment numbers but who am i to argue with a paid democratic operative so riot obviously laid off a ton and clearly the article was really a lot about my experiences uh with riot with rioters but activision blizzard was the same i remember having a meeting with Act activision blizzard back in the day when i hadn't had cause to write anything really negative about them and you know maybe some minor critique in games reviews that i was doing at the time and they were going we love what you're doing and I went, we love your work. I went, what do you mean? Every time you write an article about Riot, we all read it, we all love it. This was, an, again, this was an executive at Activision Blizzard. I used to have that level of access. And by the way, it's because Activision Blizzard, it wasn't even, Activ I don't even know if it was Activision Blizzard back then. Well, I don't know what year that merger happened. But anyway, th it, there, there was a time when that company, the executives, the executives used to go to these shitty small esports events in hoodies and you would see them and you could talk to them and they would they would interact with you and then it changed as i said coat it got gacha eyes and that was the fucking end of that but as soon as i started writing negative things about them wow all of a sudden blizzard used to send me super cool shit care packages i used to write back to them saying it's great you've sent me this but i'm legit it's not going to change anything if ever you fuck up, I'm there. <laughs> I'll be there. And they're going, nah, ha, ha, you're so funny, Richard. See you, see you at the Heroes of the Storm launch. And then I criticised WCS. And then I criticised Heroes of the Storm. And then I criticised Overwatch. And then I was blacklisted. <laughs> they're all the same. Now, there was also an, another delicious, enjoyable layoff. So, TSM. Have been in free fall uh, for a while, and they announced a firing that I just fucking was like, oh, "This is great." 
is going to get to do a, a little segment on this on the next stream. So, listen, I've covered a lot with TSM. They've been in free fall. Uh, they are still pretending they are a, a functioning business, which is fucking hilarious. But, you know, power to them. Uh, you you do it. But anyway, uh, there's, a, there's a guy there called Dunk. And Dunk has attempted to dunk on me in the past. He's blocked me for no reason. And I didn't notice it until people started retweeting it. And then it was like, you know how it works now on Twitter when someone retweets something and it goes, this person uh, this person limits who can view their tweets. And I'm like, oh, it's someone who's blocked me. Who could it be? Oh, it's Dunk from TSM. Right, now, this was his tweet. Now, keep in mind, by the way, TSM has been in free fall for ages. We all know it. We all know it's got problems. Laying off all their teams. They're not even in League of Legends. They just sold their slot. There's, there was a report saying they might even just exit from esports entirely and become like a lifestyle brand with fucking great idea that'll work uh and these were his tweets uh he said on the anniver on my fifth anniversary year working at tsm they told me i'm no longer employed that's fucking so good that's so tsm that's so tsm Happy anniversary, dear Dunk. Oh, what's in the cake, you P45? Fuck off. That's fucking hilarious. Like, you almost have to admire how fucking brazen that is. Like, So anyway, I mean, like, just wait one more day. <laughs> A couple more, a week. What's it matter, really, money-wise? But no, absolutely. Oh, yeah, is it fifth anniversary? Right, fucking get him out. Get him out. He's celebrating, is he? <laughs> and the thing is, as well, it's like, wait, didn't T weren't TSM under investigation for bullying and mistreatment of staff? And didn't they set up like a hotline? Like, and then it's just, yeah, they then done not a good company. But you, you carried water for that regime. Anyway, he was he was big sad and to a lesser extent, big mad. On the anniversary of my fifth year working at TSM, they told me I'm no longer employed. I'm currently in shock, and I'm working on processing it. As the team around me was cut, I inherited more responsibilities, and with only nine people left working on TSM, I think that says I didn't expect uh, to be next or let go. Then he adds, Slack and email got cut, in cut instantly, so I didn't get to say bye to my homies. Also, no redundancy or severance. So if anyone's got any contract work, my DMs are open. Now, so he's just gone public there and said, you yeah, fired me and I can't believe it. It was on my anniversary and they didn't even pay me severance. And then he's come back and gone, right? <laughs> he came back and went, uh, yeah, this is a tweet out of upset. Uh, for context, I was a contractor, but classed and treated as an employee. I couldn't go full employment in the UK with them being in LA. After five years, I'd have just hoped for a little parting gift. So in other words, just joking, just joking about the, uh, being entitled to a severance. I didn't. You weren't entitled to a severance. You signed the contract ticket. Read the small print in your contract. Right? Publicly implies that TSM owe him a severance. And then, yeah, I was just angry when I told that lie. <laughs> this guy's a fucking card, isn't he? I was just angry when I told that lie. Sorry about that lie. Sorry about that lie with potential legal ramifications and reputationally damaging. Just being mad. Just being mad over getting fired. So, anyway, not entitled to it. Why would you get a parting gift? Five years loyal service to the glorious empire of TSM. Gonna get a medal. Oh, gonna bake me a cake, Fanny Craddock. <laughs> Fucking no, you're getting fuck all, mate. You're getting fuck all because you worked for one of these stupid, ridiculous companies that had all the money and you were out there publicly. Ah, this is all fine. This is all fine. Look, we've got sword art. This is all fine. Where's this car? You were all fine with it. You were all fine the entire time. You know, people who were calling TSM out, you were denigrating them. You were calling them lies. Everybody knew what was going on. And, and and you wanted a parting gift from them. No, 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 no. You are surplus, my friends. You are out. You're one of the baddies. Goodbye. No gift for you. Reginald will be keeping all the gifts. <laughs> all the shit he's done. And he just gets away. <laughs> he can't keep getting away with it. But he can. And he will. 
and it's at your expense, Dunk. And I couldn't be happier because he's out there. Oh, no, boo-hoo, I lost my job. Let's uh, look at some of his greatest hits, shall we? Let's have a little look at Dunk. I've been... I got time for you, Wayne Grow. I got time for you. Right, so Dunk was the social media manager. And they played a game, and then they lost the game because they're shit. And uh, he posted this. And it it's the, are you winning, son, meme. Right? But he comes in, and the son isn't winning. He's Robloxed himself. <laughs> right? He's... <laughs> he's posted that no it's so mad what i'm laughing at uh, yeah i'm laughing at it i'm laughing at it i'm laughing at the just total contrast of imagine the horror of like you walk in and you just you find that right you know and sad <laughs> fucking sad anyway this tweet this, this tweet <laughs> This tweet has been deleted. Right. Now, listen, there's probably a time and a place you can get away with this. Or you, you that time, you know, there's probably a time and a place where that type of dark humor is just going to go. Like, put it this way. I honestly think if somebody posted that after, like, say, for example, today, I was watching Bet Boom Cloud 9, a grudge match, loads of overtimes, and then due to a mistake, the game slipped away and Nafani got really upset, right? If if one of the social media managers in Counter-Strike fucking posted that at that time, I think we all just laugh about it and we all get on with our lives. I think generally as well, the average Counter-Strike fan is more well-adjusted than the average League of Legends fan and what have you. But it's up to you. It's up to your role. Everything that goes out on your socials, you better, you better check, double check, and triple check. You these days, you have to astrally project yourself through the fucking gates of diamorphies, whatever that is, right? So you can simultaneously assess the minds of everyone in every parallel culture and belief system in the world. Because if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. And when it's an outrage, it's an outrage. So, League of Legends esports. Yeah, you're dealing with a demog. Not only are you dealing with a space that's actually had a number of tragic suicides, you're also dealing with a space where it's primarily occupied by the demographic that is one of the primary people who lose their life to suicide. It's one of the highest caught. Suicide's not going to play. It's also a notorious fucking sensitive community where dark jokes and edgy humor aren't going to be allowed. And you, TSM, one of the biggest brands in North America, has tweeted that. Right? And Dunk did that. But it's okay because they deleted it. And obviously, uh, with that uh, deletion, will come a full and frank apology. They'll totally take ownership for it. Because it's TSM and it's Dunk, and he's a good person and a good worker. But that's not what happened, you see. That's not what happened. I know you're shocked, right? I want to apologize for using the wrong image for a sad meme. I completely misjudged the template until it was pointed out. Amateur mistake, but I won't let it happen again. Right, so by the way, this is TSM Dunk crying about being fired. His job is to post memes. <laughs> he doesn't even look at them before he posts them. You're a disaster. You're a disaster. Like, seriously, you can't even manage a Twitter account. Please, if there's any contract work, well, here's your performance review, dickhead. We're going to go through it. I'm truly sorry to those that I may have offended. I really did not mean to cause offence. It was a straight copy and paste in a quick action. I thought the guy was walking away from the chair and he kicked it over in frustration. I really hope you can forgive me. That might be a lie, mightn't it? I thought he just kicked it over in frustration and was dangling from the fucking ceiling like it was Exorcist. I've been a big outspoken voice for mental health, suicide and everything that comes with it. I wouldn't joke, have never joked and did not mean to have it come out as a joke. I really, really am sorry. I'm sorry. We're sorry. So he did that. He did that apology, right? And you go, okay, fine, right? Now, TSM then did one of their famous 
internal investigations. Mental health is a huge priority, especially during these difficult times. It's not a subject to be laughed at or made into a meme. We have reviewed the situation with the person who posted the tweet, and we understand that while this was not his intention, he knows this was a huge mistake. Moving forward, processes are now in place to prevent something like this from happening again. Process number one, use your fucking eyes. I got some spare specs you can have. For those of you that know Dunk, please know that it was an honest mistake and is, fo and, and is focused on educating himself and is committed to working a rebuild trust within our community. Rest assured that we have taken this situation very seriously, not only as an organisation, but as the people who work for it. You may not know the spirit of who works for TSM, but we do. We strive to build a positive community around something that we are all very passionate about. We will learn from this mistake, but please refrain from personal attacks and threats. But enough about what we have to tell Reggie. Oh, I've got jokes, I've got material, motherfuckers. So he did that, but I also want to take you back in time to a Gonzo Award-winning stupid bit of drama. Remember when TSM had a fucking tantrum because they mentioned on that segment that my colleague Latigris wrote, they mentioned the accurate, the factually true history between Doublelift and TSM, and TSM had a tantrum about it and complained to Riot because you apparently weren't praising their shit team, their placeholder team enough, even though the segment ended with focusing on praising their shit placeholder team. And so, ah! Dunk, watch that segment. The things I want to tweet right now. Holy shit. What is it? Another suicide meme? You haven't even got the fucking balls to just admit you thought the fucking suicide meme was funny. So what, what are you going to tweet, homie? But no, you see, one of the things cowards do is when they don't have the balls to say what they want to say, they tell you they've got someone to say, but they can't say it. They post that Jose Mourinho meme. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. They do things like this. It's because they're cowards. So what he did was he drew attention to that segment and TSM fans dogpiled her. And then Doublelift fans dogpiled her. And what happened to her? Anyone remember? I remember. Because I had to cover this not once, uh, but twice. That mental health, that dunk value so much, he would never do anything to jeopardise anyone's mental health or joke about it. Yeah, she got so dogpiled by the notoriously vitriolic fan base that she had to take a mental health break away from LCS. So, she went away. But, doesn't end there. After that break, and once it got to the end of the season, she quit. She left. She quit the job. It just wasn't worth it anymore. So, Dunk contributed to, effectively, stirring up a hate mob against a woman, and it's cost her a job in the long run. Wellity, wellity, wellity. And what about now, dickhead? Put it this way. For Dunk, I'll say this. I'll say it into the camera. I will look you in the eyes when someone invariably links this. I hope you're on the streets, cunt. I hope you have to fucking get handout after handout to make ends meet. I hope you never get another job. I hope your kids are looking at you one day going, Mummy, mummy, why is daddy less of a man? Why can't he provide for us? Because that is what you would wish on other people, you fucking pig. I hope that's in your future. So no, I won't be crying about him losing a job or the many other animals like him. Because when they've got the hammer, you're all nails. But then, when they get banged out, and we all have to fucking gather around and cry, and oh no, I can't believe this is happening. Why am I not getting gifts? What did I do wrong? Yeah, I'm good. And then hilariously, by the way, just to show, he's not just a coward. He's a cuckold as well. He's not just a coward, a liar, and a hypocrite. He's also a cuckold because you know what he did after publicly going, I didn't get a severance and I didn't get a gift. He went and wrote a bullshit PR farewell message. Went back to the people that did him so wrong and wrote a fucking PR farewell. Now here it is. 
I started out at TSM by making a fan account. They really have high hiring standards at that company. Running updates on the org for free. He did it for free. And ended as head of global social. Through my five years, I launched TSM socials into three new regions. Japan, India and Brazil. Created eight new accounts. I mean, think of the work involved, guys. Launched and grew TikTok to 1.8 million followers. He surely did that, not the brand. And expanded the global global social media team from one to nine. I helped produce three billion impressions, 500 million video views and grew the social channels by 3.8 million followers. This was more than a job to me. I was passionate. My love for the org ran so deep. I felt like I was finally part of the team. I worked with so many incredible people. I'll cherish the friendships I made. I learned so much from everyone around me. I will look back on these five years as the best time of my life. I got to travel the globe tweeting about a team I loved. My wife gave birth to our daughter and I watched TSM Apex win a world championship in my home country. To the TSM fans, the ones I set on people when it's convenient. No one matches your passion. No one matches your dedication to the org through thick or thin. You're the reason I kept going for so long and the org is so lucky to have you all. I'll miss you. So TSM Apex, I love you. Thanks for all the glory. My last note goes out to Adel. I will forever be grateful for you for today. Taking a shot on someone with no experience. You single-handedly changed my life. Peace out. Fuck it. Bay life. Punks. Punks in this business, guys. Bay life. Can't even imagine coming back and writing something like that after your initial gut reaction was, what? They're not just giving me a big bag of money on the way out? <laughs> after squandering millions? Ridiculous. So, listen... The great esports layoff pity party has had a, it's, it's had its high points for me. I've actively enjoyed some of it. I, mu I must say. 